Sometimes, even myself, I've been scared enough to leave the Walton House. Most of the Sheriff's Department is afraid to come in here. Citizens of this community are afraid of this house. That physically can't happen, but I just saw it with my own eyes. It's just mind blowing. It, that's all I can say. No way, man. Wow. Dude, this is cool. Are you <laughs> serious, dude? Oh, whoa. You really get to feel like you're interacting with something. Dude. All right, Dave, we are back once again in Atlanta, Indiana at the Asher Walton House. Yes, we are. It has been about a year since we have been here and it is good to finally be back and visit the spirits here of the Asher Walton House. What's interesting, one of the reasons we wanted to come back was because Paranormal Dares, who oversees the investigations here at the Asher Walton House, has stated and claimed that the paranormal activity here at the house has escalated. And there are things happening here now that they never had experienced in the past. Oh my God. What the crap? Oh. And we're here tonight to see if we can capture paranormal activity or evidence that points towards a different type of haunting here at the Asher Walton House. Absolutely, yeah, a lot of strange new occurrences, like you said, I'm excited to get in there and see what's going on with this place a year later. I am too, and from what we understand, this house built in 1868 is in fact so renownedly haunted that even local children and other citizens of this community are afraid of this house and do not want to even step foot inside. So are you ready to walk in and see how the Asher Walton has fared since we were here last? I'm ready, let's go. Let's, let's go see inside. what it's got. Love that gate. His wife, her name was Julia Wolf, and Asher worked for Mr. Wolf, who owned the general store. He got so good at his job, he actually ended up buying out the general store he opened a grist mill, a couple lumber mills, and he accumulated a lot of wealth and a lot of businesses. He decided to marry Julia Wolf, which he made her Julia Wolf Walton, and her wedding present was this house. So in 1868, he started building the house for his new wife. But he wanted the best of the best, not, not just a normal house. He wanted the best for his wife. It's just displaying his wealth, yet at the same time, his love. Look, look what I can give you. I can give you this. This house was built out of love to raise generations of their family. And then many other families lived here after the Waltons. And it was a, a halfway house at one time, a boarding house. They had funerals downstairs in the women's parlor. So he built this house out of love, and I believe, you know, they're still here. They still love the house, and they're still here walking the halls. All right. I remember when we were here last time, we weren't really sure what type of paranormal activity we would experience. We were told that this place was a portal for children, for the spirits of children. We have personally experienced things in this home to believe there are children. From balloons moving, balloons popping. <gasps> what? From running through the hallways, the laughter that you can hear. We had a couple psychics. They both hit on a, a little boy called Suspender Boy, or they called him Suspender Boy. So there's a little boy that wears suspenders upstairs in the upstairs, he hangs out the top of the staircase and plays in the upstairs hallway. And they both said that they feel that this child brings other children here from around the neighborhood that passed away to play with, that he's lonely. And that he's very uh, much seeking attention both from adults and 
he brings other children here to get attention. And we have caught little boy, sounds like children, talking, and we've had, the, it sounds like a little girl laughing and giggling. We know there's children here. We know it. <laughs> and that they would constantly have activity that would play with devices like the REM pod because they look like toys. They flash, they beep, they make sound. And on that investigation, that was extremely accurate. The number of times we had the REM pod alone go off inside this house was staggering. And I'm excited to see if the same thing happens tonight. Whoa, that thing is going crazy. Hopefully that happens again tonight while we're here, and even with some of our other new devices that we've acquired since the last time we were here. Hopefully, and I remember this room was very important to our investigation because in this room, you performed an Estes Method Spirit Box session, and we believe that we came into contact with a young child named Ed, who was Asher Walton's son, who is believed to have passed away. Just heard a little kid go, hi. Hello. REM pod just went off. I heard that. Ed, if that's you, can you touch it again? Get closer to it. Oh my God. Leaving it on AM because I can't get it. We have a, a website developer that helps us with our other company, Paranormal Dares, and she is, um, she writes programs for computers. So she thinks in, you know, ones and zeros. She's a very logical thinker, does not, she's not a spiritual person as far as the paranormal, she doesn't believe in it. Um, we were sitting in the large dining room one day, uh, it was broad daylight, like three in the afternoon, and we heard a noise. We, she was on one side of the table, we were on the other side talking to her about our website. We heard a noise and it sounded like somebody was coming in the front door. So I said, oh, somebody just walked in the front door because that's what it sounded like. Well, the dining room door then rattled and the door swung open swung shut and then probably two seconds later the next door in the room which leads into the small dining room that door swung open and swung shut she let out some uh vulgarities which i won't repeat and said she was never coming back here she said it's going to take me weeks to wrap my brain on what i just saw because that can't happen that physically can't happen but i just saw it with my own eyes this is probably one of the more active places that I've been to. Like, sometimes, even myself, I've been scared enough to leave the Walton house. Oh, would you look at that? Our friend is still here. There they are. Hey there, buddy. I don't think you've moved in a year. Are you doing okay? It's a little quiet. He is. Thanks for joining us again. And before we actually go upstairs, I wanted to step into the dining room here because the door in the dining room that leads outside is one of the main reasons why we came to the Asher Walton house the first time. Mm -hmm. We actually had several investigators here that night uh, from uh, both Jess and I's company, Paranormal Dares and some other places. And we were all upstairs sound asleep. It was dead of winter. Uh, it was very cold, cold, bitter cold night actually. We'd all gone to bed kind of early, turned in early Everybody was asleep in different bedrooms. Um, we didn't hear anything with our ears, but one of the gentlemen got up to use the restroom downstairs. He walked downstairs and he noticed it was freezing cold, absolutely freezing. And he notices that the door is wide open. And he's like, oh my God, someone's broken the back door and they're creeping around in our house. We don't even know about it because we're all upstairs asleep. We don't know. They're, we're all asleep. So he immediately came, woke everybody up, alerted everybody. We thought somebody had actually broke in and broke the you know, back door in. And so they look around the house, they check every room, nobody's there. So they decide to rewind the security footage. And here to find out, not only did the back door open, there's an inside latch padlock or, or security lock, it, you cannot unlock it from the outside. It's only a one-way lock. You can hear the lock being flipped open 
and then the door violently gets yanked open from the inside. The outside door never opens, and you can see it clearly on camera. It, ne- it stays up, stays shut. It was locked from the inside, so yes, yeah, someone inside the house would have had to unlock it in order to open that door. And that's what's so bizarre is because you can hear the inner door unlock, swing open. It's, it's just mind blowing. It, that's all I can say. Poltergeist activity, the spirits of children, the spirit of an aggressive man that they believe is somewhat new to the house. This could be a very interesting night here at the Asher Walton house. I remember specifically the energy is way different on this second floor than what it is down here. Yes. Even the last time we were here. My wife is the actual manager of the Asher Walton house. I just help her out, but she has gone around and talked to many of the the elderly or old time citizens that live here that have been in town for many, many years. They told a story after story after story about how they would sit in the park across the street and when nobody lived here watching the curtains upstairs move, seeing a lady in white uh, in the window upstairs. The local police department, Hamilton County Sheriff's Department, told us they have an entire file on this house over many, many years going back of calls they've had to the house when the house was locked with a security system in it that the security system would go off, they'd show up and sit outside and watch all the lights going off and on in the house and there was nobody here. And it happened so many times, in fact, that most of the Sheriff's Department is afraid to come in here. If any of the spirits of this house are still here, come on out and talk to us tonight. We'll be here all night. And hopefully you remember us from last time. The Tate Room, the Roy D. Tate Room, that's what they called this when this was a bed and breakfast. But now there's apparently a very aggressive spirit that is known to interact with people in this room. They've captured on camera a woman having something grab her by the neck and trying to rip her necklace off when she was sitting right here in this chair. Yep. There's where she puts her hand up. She's listening and grabbed her necklace. I have a music box upstairs. To me, it's personal because I never got a music box growing up. I always wanted one as a little girl. And Keith bought me one at Disneyland. We were doing a live feed uh, just a couple weeks ago. She wound it up and it was going and we had you know people watching. And I was talking and then she said, can you stop the box? Can you stop it from playing? The Cinderella stops moving. Everything stops. And I'm like, okay, let go. Let go of it. And then it starts working again. Let it play, please. Let go. Are you holding it? Oh my God. What? The crap. Oh my God. And it played all the way till the end, till it just ran out of steam. Like you really get to feel like you're interacting with something. And that's what I won't forget. Now in this hallway right here, they believe that this is the most overwhelming spot in the house where people feel the most uncomfortable. Now that could just be because the hallway itself doesn't have any windows. It gets very overwhelmingly dark when the sun goes down in this hallway. But I do remember I did a spirit box session in this hallway. And even though I didn't hear it with my own ears on review, I picked up on it. And through that spirit box, I hear a voice that sounds like it says, he can see us. And if you're still here, whoever you are, if you're Mr. Asher Walton or Ed or the children or anyone that is said to come through this house, we'd love to see you again. And if you could show yourself to us so that we know you're here, we're here to play tonight. And that means you can do anything that you want. But my wife and I have slept in the house uh, numerous times. We've slept in the Asher Walton's room. A couple times we've had 
things where something has hit the door, the door is right next to the bed. So when you're laying in bed and something smacks the door from the hallway side, it will sit you straight up. And that's happened more than once. And we've heard children running down the hall while we were sleeping in there more than once. The last time I tried sleeping there, I didn't get a lot of sleep. And I told Keith I ain't doing it anytime soon. <laughs> Asher and Julia both died uh, in the Walton bedroom, we were told. They both died at 3 a.m., uh, which is kind of ironic because they died years, many, many years apart. Julia died before Asher. Um, they had lost their oldest son, Edgar, and when they lost him, six months later, Julia passed. My husband one time was up in the closet and we caught on SOS a child sitting in his lap and it became very emotional for him. It was a very, very emotional moment. Yeah, this whole area right up here, like this long hallway here, and you've got each of these bedrooms off to the side, but the hallway and then the, the Walton suite or master suite or whatever you want to call that plus the nursery they do have to me at least a different vibe from every other room in this house i believe that's another place we should spend some more time tonight because last time it was just a little bit off the chain it was kind of crazy if you're here can you lay down on that bed oh thank you there's a lot of activity in every part of this place. From the top of this second floor all the way down through to the front door, there's been paranormal activity claims that really cannot be debunked and cannot be refuted. So I'm hoping tonight we capture something just as convincing. Are you ready to put batteries in stuff, wait for the sun to go down and set up an abandonment session here in the Asher Walton house to see what happens when this house is completely empty once again. I am ready. It's time. Let's do it. Asher Walton house. All right, so we are getting ready to leave for abandonment. We have four cameras throughout the Asher Walton house, and we are going to leave for about an hour to see what happens when the house is completely empty. To help set up, we had Shady. Everyone say hi to Shady, the Asher Walton dog. This is Keith and Jess's dog. He is very squirmy right now because he wants me to put him down and let him run. But, huh Shady, we are gonna leave and go play at your house across the road. Huh, okay, go for it. <laughs> so we have a camera right down here pointed down this long hallway. Keith says that these hallways always have shadow movement. They have a lot of creepy stuff happen here. So we have a male meter here in the hallway over by the stairwell and pointing into the main parlor as well as down the hallway towards the dining room. We have an action cam and on the stairs, a REM pod. Remember, we had that REM pod there last time we were here and on abandonment, it went absolutely crazy. So I'm excited to see what happens when we leave it there tonight on abandonment. Let's go. Upstairs on the second floor, we have a camera pointing down that long hallway, and we have a spirit pod setting in the middle of the hallway. Another proximity meter, there's static electricity around that antenna. Anything breaks that proximity, it is going to alarm. And that camera's pointing all the way down that long, creepy, dark hallway, all the way towards the maid's chambers. So we also have another camera. The fourth and final one is set up in the Tate room. This is where recently a woman has been grabbed around the neck, had her necklace possibly even almost ripped off. We have a paranormal music box in there as well as the EDI plus meter. So with that, Dave, are you ready to leave this house completely empty to see what happens? I sure am. Hit him with it. All right, y'all know how it goes. Make sure to go grab your uh, relieving merch. Make sure to get this video to 6,500 thumbs up. So here we go. Here we go. Relieve it. Lights are off, let's do it, let's hit the road. Exiting through the side door behind the camera.
Oddly, in contrast to our last abandonment session at the Asher Walton house about 20 months ago, the entire house seems quiet. The REM pod on the stairs is silent. And the only other sounds that we hear from the camera in the foyer are the faint sounds of movement. This quiet and uneventful abandonment isn't really a bad thing at all. The lack of action now could mean the phenomena in 2021 is all the more unexplainable. If the same devices behaved in the exact same way, it would be less paranormal, not more. And this just makes the results from our first investigation more exciting. Hopefully something was captured. Find out when we get home and review it, but you guys already know. Let's get into this session here at the Asher Walton house. All right, everybody. So we're going to start the first session here on our return to the Asher Walton house. We're going to start off by doing an SLS sweep of the whole house and see what we can get. Ryan's running the camera here. He's going to be following me around. We've got the second floor laced with equipment. Hopefully some stuff goes off and uh, we'll see what we can get tonight at the Asher Walton house. You ready, Ryan? I am ready. And while we are going through this walkthrough, I'm going to be running on a spirit box program that was designed by our friends, Amy and Jared from Amy's Crypt called Ghost Tube Vox. So we'll see if any intelligent voices come through while Dave runs that SLS camera that you're looking at right now. So. Just looking a little tilty. All right, here we go. Ready? Yep. The good thing about this camera here as well is that if anything happens behind me while we're walking, this camera... Is it Ooh, that gave me cold chills. Yeah. Who is this? Who is the voice that we're hearing? Hey, that is not a person. That's the skeleton down there. It's mapping our friend. <laughs> so we know it works, huh? We sure do. Let's pass through the parlor area. Okay. Now this is where they would have held uh, <laughs> wakes. Yes. Oh, wow. Whoa. Whoa. I saw that. Whoa. Who was that? Were you just standing in front of me here? I'm just using this thing to take your picture, if that's okay. Can you come back out so I can take your picture? We have a bunch of toys upstairs. If there are any kids up there that want to touch one of them. Can you go upstairs? And touch one of those? Or walk in front of that box, it'll play music for you. When I said that, it went insanely quiet in here. Yeah. When you said what? Ask them to go upstairs. Oh, yeah. We're gonna come upstairs too, is that okay? Ooh, that was a weird voice. It shows. What shows? Are you gonna show yourself to us? Are you gonna stand in front of Dave so he can see Whoa. you? What? 
Some literally mapped as soon as you said that. Oh my god. Are you gonna stand in front of Dave so he can see Whoa. you? What? Some literally mapped as soon as you said that. Oh my god. Who was that? Can you tell us your name? You know, there's a big storm coming here in just about an hour. It's not far away now, and we would love it if you could pull the energy from that storm and show yourself to us or make something happen to show people that there is a possibility to communicate with us after you've passed on. No way, man. It said interested. Yeah. That was clear as day. Wow. And that was the same one man, as before. The man's voice that said it shows. A possibility to communicate with us after you've passed on. Interested. No way, man. It said interested. Yeah. We're interested too. Will you show the world that you're still here and you can still make things move and make things happen around us and speak to us? We're getting ready to come upstairs. We have an instrument sitting in the floor there with a red light on it. If I count down from three, can you try and touch that? Three. Two. Someone watching. Someone watching. One. Touch the lights. <laughs> Bastard. Yeah. The, ooh, that was creepy. Who are you calling a bastard? We're coming up. If you don't want us up there, let us know. We're gonna move in here and this is gonna be our house, is that okay? Are you f***ing <laughs> serious, dude? That just said okay. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for sharing your house with us. <laughs> that was so cool. That is wild. That's one of the most direct responses ever. Yeah, through the Vox. Yeah. Wow. Let's start in this room. Okay. Can you stand in front of Dave so he can see you? Ooh. I saw that really fast, but I think it's just mapping the room. Dude, did you hear that? <laughs> yes. That's Dave is what I heard. I heard it too, that's Dave. Yeah, so it's mapping the rock rocking horse there by accident whenever you only cut out half of it. Yeah. Okay, but it, it did say that's Dave. Yeah, that was. Whoops. Yes, that's Dave right there. Mr. Walton. Mr. Walton, you built this house for your wife, Julia. And it's a beautiful home. If any of the children are here, do you remember the thing that goes beep, beep? It's out in the hallway. Can you try it? We'd love it if you could make the thing go beep, beep. That is the same voice that keeps coming. His office. His office. That had an accent. That was weird.
Here we come. Hmm. It seems like, because we were getting intelligent answers and responses through that, through Vox. I mean, I, as far as we know, none of the equipment has gone off. But right now it feels like the intelligent responses have stopped too and then they're just like playing peekaboo with us. Yeah. What do you say we move back down to the first floor because it seemed like we were getting more responses there and we set up a different experiment and see what we can come up with down there in the, in the parlor maybe. Let's do it, let's head down. Let's head down there. I don't have to do anything but just listen to this as white noise, right? Right. This next session, we'll be doing something we've never done before. A combination of a ghost tube seer session and a solo session. Dave will be alone in the parlor, surrounded by equipment, while using ghost tube seer with the ghost tube lens. The lens is a VR headset that limits your sense of sight to only what images are being generated by seer as it selects words based on environmental readings and runs them through an image generator. I will be monitoring Dave from the back dining room using the house's security system. Not only will we be separated by space, but I'm also going to deprive him of his sense of hearing. He'll be wearing headphones with loud white noise blasting into his ears from an unused radio frequency. Total isolation of his senses to focus on seer as I quietly ask questions from the other side of the house. When he sees an image, he'll describe what he sees, but you'll also be able to see it on screen, here. And just in case, some sort of voice manifests through the blank white noise, we'll be recording that as well. Okay, so Dave is officially inside the seer. Ooh, I heard a woman's voice say hello. What? Remember, Dave is not listening to a sweeping spirit box. It is tuned to an unused frequency for the purpose of the white noise only. And just as we're getting started, a woman's or child's voice comes through the static saying hello. Could we have just captured proof that this white noise allows spirit voices to come through. Take another listen. What? And let us know what you think in the comments below. Ooh, I... Ooh, I... Heard a woman's voice say hello. Ryan? Yes. The, um... The seer, like, white noise froze. It froze? Yeah. Okay, hold on, I'm coming. Straight. Jess. What? It just said... Jess. The ovalist just said Jess. Nighttime. Nighttime. All right, recording, headphones going on. Okay. He has equipment all around him, as you can see in this room, in the parlor. And who knows what's gonna happen. If there's anyone here with me, my name is Ryan. That's Dave in there in the parlor. He's He has this weird thing on his head. Can you go in there and stand next to him and give him words that will show him an image of what your life was like here at the Asher Walton house? Lust mama. Lust mama. There's also lots of lights and strange... Caress. You can caress Dave if you'd like. 
where you can use that white noise in his ears to speak to him. It's not sweeping, but he heard a woman's voice coming through that white noise. And that's the weird part. It's not sweeping through the spirit box. It's just set on one stagnant channel that has no radio signal coming through. So the fact he heard a woman's voice is bizarre. Oh, generating. We've got a woman with a very creepy mouth. She looks to have red makeup or B-L-O-O-D on her face. Makeup or blood? Very on young woman. Who is this woman? Is this Julia? If that's Julia, can you set the music off or touch one of the lights? What did you feel? I'm not sure if you're in here or just walked by or something, but I thought I felt the floor vibrating. No, I was not walking at all. Generating. Okay, we've got a middle-aged man with brown hair and a beard. Is that Asher Walton? Mr. Walton, is that you? And he's gone. He's gone. It wasn't until the moment I was editing this segment for the episode that I made a strange connection. Earlier in the day, Keith told us a story about an experience he had the very first time that he stepped into the Asher Walton house. An experience that happened in the foyer, just on the other side of the wall, directly behind Dave. I walked in the front door and I was looking right at the next door, which has this red tinted stained glass, and I shined the flashlight up and I saw a face, distinct face, looking back at me through the red stained glass. And it was quite alarming because I actually thought somebody physically was in the house. Uh, and then it was gone. It was just gone in a split second. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a dark hair. I saw a dark beard. Um, people think maybe I saw Asher Walton. I don't know that for sure. I just know it was a man and he had a beard and he was looking at me through the glass plain as day. I tell you what, they believe this doll right here has an attachment to it, that it went to multiple different owners who they believe didn't... Some. Some. They believe they didn't want this doll because there was something attached to it. Show Dave an image of what is attached to that doll. I'm gonna shut this off because it just keeps spitting out random words. Generating. Here we go. Ooh. This is like a creepy looking demon face with a creepy mouth and what looks like Worms or tentacles or snakes coming out of its eyes. What in the hell? That is very creepy. If Dave is seeing what you look like, can you touch one of those lights? Touch the thing on the couch. Make it light up. Can you show Dave who it was, show Dave an image of who touched that woman's neck or who grabbed that woman by the neck. Generating. I wonder what it is. 
looks like a a window and like the peak of a house with a window. Hmm. Is the woman in white here with us? Dave's only going to stay in for another five minutes. Show him that you exist. Show him that you can communicate with us and that you can hear our voice. This house is very beautiful, and we want to know about the woman in white. Is Julia the woman in white? Generating? There we go. Oh, whoa. We've got an elderly lady sitting on a bed. Oh, I've got cold chills. An elderly woman in a white gown with white hair, short white hair, sitting on a bed. She looks to be at least 80 plus years old. Thank you, Julia. Thank you so much. And she's gone. They would sit in the park across the street, and when nobody lived here, watching the curtains upstairs move, seeing a lady in white uh, in the window upstairs. He's all the way on the other side of the house. And what I asked directly was sent as a message to him through imagery. And I think that is fantastic. That is so cool. It feels like it's getting cold in this room. Are you right next to him? Are you beside him? Is that why it's so cold in there? Okay, that's all my eyes can take. Okay, I'm coming in there. Okay. After you saw the picture of the house with the thing that reminded me of people seeing someone in the windows from the town. Okay. So I asked, Julia, are you the woman in white? And that's when you saw the woman in a white dress with white hair sitting oh, wow. on the bed. <laughs> oh, wow. That is creepy. And you'll see my reaction on the actual video because I about fell out of the chair. <laughs> wow, look at that. That is an elderly woman mm -hmm. in a white dress. And there's actually a window there. In the window. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, so Dave did his solo with the seer here in the parlor. I'm gonna be moving upstairs to do my solo on the second floor. I'm gonna be focusing to start with on the Tate room where there have been a couple of people that have been scared out of here. I already have an action cam rolling on the hallway pointing into the Tate room. I have some pieces of equipment set up in here already, so. All right guys, so Ryan is heading upstairs to the Tate room. We can see him on screen now. He's just outside of the room. Can you hear me okay, Dave? I can hear you. All right. That's me. Okay, so Ryan has entered the Tate room. Now, before I get started here, I wanted to comment on something because while Dave was doing the seer session, when I asked Julia, if she was the woman in white, that image that popped up, what's very strange to me is it almost looks like that bed is sitting in front of this window right here. True. As though she's sitting down, daylight streaming in through this window right here, which is very, very creepy to me. I'm gonna sit right here to start with. If there's anyone in here with me, my name is Ryan. Uh, 
I'm up here by myself. There was a woman who they said had her throat grabbed. She was grabbed by the neck. Who was that? If there are any spirits here in the Asher Walton house, can you please go up into the room where Ryan is? Go up there and let him know you're there. He has a bunch of devices set up for you to use. He'd like for you to come upstairs and try and use them. Games. Games. Ghost Tube said games. I'm here to speak to whoever built or lives in this beautiful home. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, if you're here, go up and talk to Ryan. Ed, we know that you like that toy that does all the beeping up there. Can you go show Ryan what it sounds like? It's another man's voice right there. Who's the man that I'm hearing? My name's Ryan. Goodbye. I think it just said goodbye. Can you close one of the doors up there? I didn't understand this voice in the moment, but it sounds like a man says, here before. Could this be an acknowledgement that someone recognizes us from when we were here in September 2021. Can you close the door to the bedroom that my friend Ryan is in upstairs? We, we come with the utmost respect to you in this house and we would love to just get to know your story. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, that's twice it's said the name Elizabeth. Hmm. I'm going to leave this in here for a second. I'm going to take this REM pod and I'm going to go to the Walton room because it just feels very quiet and just not, I don't feel anything in here. Let's see if we can find out where he's going. There he is. I always, always, always feel pulled to the nursery back here. There's just something about it. I always feel pulled to it. So here's what we're going to do. Okay, so he's getting set up in that room. Let's check back in with our other room. Elizabeth, you've come through twice now. I'm not sure who you are, but there's a room just at the top of the stair, at the top of the stairs with a bunch of devices in it. I would love if you could go up there and try and set one of those devices off. Hmm. And I'm gonna sit right here. Okay, so you can see that Ryan is in here, in the nursery. If there's someone here with me in the nursery, my name is Ryan. I'd love for you to come out and speak to me. Are there, are there any children here who want to talk? A 
Elizabeth, if you're here still, my friend Ryan is in the nursery off of the main bedroom. Could you go say hi to him through the radio? The REM pod just went off. The REM pod just went off. Hello? feeling that I should move in here. That is wild. I have chills. I have chills right now. Elizabeth, if that's you that made the rim pod go off, can you do it again? Who just set that off? He told me. He told me. Whoa! Dude, this is cool. This is cool. Whoa! Who is this? Elizabeth, tell him your name through the radio, please. Come on, you can do it. Have you been waiting for me to come in here tonight? It is going nuts right now. Elizabeth, tell him your name. It is Max out. Have you been waiting for me? Can you make that go off again for him? And now it's just stopped and I, that, that extreme chill that I had is not here anymore. I don't feel that charge that I felt just a few minutes ago. I really do feel like tonight it's like we're playing hide and go seek with a child because it's just like back and forth and back and forth. I wonder if I move this back in here and then gave them a little bit of space to touch it. Um, can you touch that again for me? Whoa. Thank you. Did you just want me to leave? Elizabeth, if that's you doing that, thank you. Can you make it go all the way up to the highest light? Just grab a hold of the... Grab a hold of it. Thank you. Do you like that light? Do you like those lights? Have you been hoping we'd bring them in there for you? Can you please come up and say something to me through this box in my hand if you're a child? Okay, Elizabeth, if that's you, there's two doors in that room that Ryan is in. Can you Thank you. move one of the doors in that room? It sounded like it just said, go sit down. Do you want me to come back? Can you step away from it, please? I'm gonna ask you another question if you step back away from it. And you can light it up for the, if the answer to the question is yes, you can light it up again, how about that? And we can talk to each other that way. It is just absolutely going nuts. Can you step back, please? Come back over this way. Come here. Do you want me to sit down in there? Quick. 
Quickly. Quickly. Scanning AM. All right, I'm going to come back in there and sit down again then. And you can show me how you play with these lights when I sit right down in front of it. Can you show me? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, if that's you, can you listen to Ryan? He's upstairs. He's trying to get you to turn the lights on again for him. Where did you go? Are you still in this nursery with me? Ed, is that you? You are annoying. <laughs> well, that was very interesting. Just called Ryan annoying. I do not know why that REM pod was going off because we have not had any of our meters or equipment go off pretty much all night since we came back from abandonment. They've not made a peep. So that was really cool to set it in there and have it do that and to do it on command and then to do it pretty consistently. Yeah, I don't know, but I am going to pack this stuff up, go back downstairs and meet up with Dave and see where we're gonna go from there. Quickly. Ryan, well, it is three o'clock in the morning. It is three o'clock in the morning. We've had a long, long weekend. We've just run out of gas. We just can't go anymore. I mean, I we had a really cool investigation here, but before we get into a lot of what we think of the Asher Walton house the second time around, I think we should ask this guy what he thought. What'd you think? What do you think, bro? I thought it was groundbreaking. Me too, Skeleton. Me too. But this was a really interesting night at the Asher Walton house. I really think that even though most of it was quiet, the stuff that we did get was very creepy. No way, man. And intelligent. Sitting in that base camp in front of that screen and asking about the woman in white and Julia and having that pop up through the seer, a woman in a white dress sitting in front of the window was just absolutely incredible. And then to have me be alone up there and to have you ask this little girl Elizabeth, whoever she was, who kept saying her name, to touch the REM pod. He told me. Whoa! Dude, this is cool. This is cool. And then the, the REM pod starts going off in the nursery. Very I mean, odd. You just, you just can't explain stuff like that, especially because the REM pod has been pretty much silent from what we can tell all night long. Mm -hmm. Never went off once in our presence until that moment. So... There is definitely something intelligent or many spirits that are intelligent that are haunting the Asher Walton house. And if you guys ever have the chance to come here, we would highly recommend it. We would. So you can contact uh, Jessica uh, Marie Angel and uh, her phone number and our email address at 1868walton 
is uh, on our Facebook site, the Asher Walton House, or you can reach out to me, Keith Fournier, on, on Facebook or Paranormal Dares, and uh, we'll get you booked in here. We've, uh, you know, we're, we're willing to, to work with anybody to get anybody in here who wants to do good investigating. The only thing that I have to add is that um, I think everybody watching should hit the thumbs up button and try to get us to 6,500 likes on this one and uh, go grab you some We're Leaving merch. We just released a whole bunch of new merch uh, things over on our website, paranormalquestmerch.com, and they should head over there and grab some, shouldn't they? Paranormalquestmerch.com <laughs> You guys, this is what you get at three o'clock in the morning, three big event days in a row, and zero sleep, right? That's right. But we want to thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of this video. It helps more than you know. And like Dave told you, hit that like button if you like what you saw because that helps this video reach a wider audience. Also, if you're new here and new to our Paranormal Quest, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you never, ever miss an episode. That is a lot of support to this channel and we appreciate it so much. But if you'd like to support additionally, we have a Patreon page where you can become a member of our YouTube channel. I think that pretty much sums it up and covers it. We would love to have you along on our paranormal quest, but until next time, thank you so much. More locations, more adventures, coming up. <laughs>